um, so I'm back and I wanted to do a, a follow-up video on my colposcopy and leap results and experience and whatever symptoms I'm having now. Um, so I went to the doctor back the 26th of this month of August, so that was Tuesday. Um, I was telling my husband, um, you know, I hadn't heard anything from the doctor yet, so I was figuring that that was good news since... More often than not, these results and these tests are more like, if you don't hear anything, then that's good news. And if you do, or if it's something really, really bad, then they call you to come in right away. Which is kind of the experience I had when I had my pap and my colposcopy. What happened was, they called me, obviously when the pap was abnormal, and they wanted me to come in and schedule a leap. I mean, sorry, a colposcopy. And then, when I went to do that... Um, before the results even came in, before the day came for me to review the results of the colposcopy, the doctor called me um, prior to my appointment. So I was taking the fact that they had not called me on the results from the leap as a good sign. I um, was telling my husband, well, babe, they haven't called me, so I guess all is good. So when I get to the house, when I get to the clinic, sorry, the office, because it's a private doctor, um, they were like, oh, we don't even have your results yet. I was like, what? Well, there goes the theory out the window that it's nothing bad and they didn't call me because they don't even know what the results are. So long story short, she had me um, sign off a, a waiver and the waiver was basically going to let the hospital release the results from the leap surgery. Um, I was a little thrown back because I was like, well, if you guys needed um, a waiver signed, why wasn't I told this or fax this so that I could sign it for you guys the day before my... Um, appointment so I wouldn't waste time because I was going I took half day from work off and I went to the doctor and then after the doctor I was gonna go straight to work so I was a little annoyed at that because then it did take a little bit longer than it should have but everything was fine because the doctor was able to call in and get some favors um, get a favor and have it pushed through sooner than having to wait um, as long, you know, a lot longer to get the results faxed back. Um, so when I went in with, when I went in to see the doctor, like I said before, he is very nice. I feel very comfortable with him. He was like, so you're here. That means you haven't died yet. Like a little comic relief, I guess. And I was like, yeah, totally. I'm still here. So he was like, well, the good news is that all of your margins are clear, which he explains to me to me, which means that when they cut the the cervix and they remove the um, the infected area, it's also kind of like a treatment and a biopsy. So what they do is they take that little piece and they cut it into like 20 different other pieces to sample and test all of those to make sure that the margins are clear and if they are not, how deep in the uh, infected tissue goes. So he explained to me that they did cut it into 20 different pieces about... And they did um, examine under a microscope each individual piece and that all of the margins were clear and I had no problems. And thank God that I was going to be able to just come back in six months to get another pap smear and see what would happen then. Um, so that was a really big relief and I was, I felt like a, ba a big weight had been lifted off, lifted off my shoulders. Um, I was very um, appreciative um, at how, you know... He explained everything to me, like I said before, and how um, expedited everything was, even though I didn't have the stupid release form for the hospital right away. So that was really good, and I was really excited about that. He did tell me that I should wait two weeks at least to start trying to conceive, which actually works perfectly because I am due to get my period soon. Um, sorry, backtracking back, he asked me if I had gotten a period yet, and I said, no, I should be getting it soon. So he did say, be aware and let call me immediately if you do not get a period. The reason why he said that is because a very small percentage of women get something, and I forgot the name of it, but it's something where, like, the canal of your cervix, um, like, blocks. It creates, like, a blockage because the, the cells are going over and kind of healing itself so it kind of heals the, the the cervix opening and what happens is it doesn't allow your period to come down. He did say that he is confident that wasn't going to happen to me because he attributes a lot of that happening to whenever they're doing or performing the leap surgery rather than taking one swipe of the cervix and removing the whole infected area in one swipe 
that other blockage thing he was talking about usually occurs whenever they pass the the instrument more than once and they cut it off little by little, little by little, causing more scar tissue. So he was saying that he was confident and he didn't think I was going to have that because when he did my leap, he did perform one smooth swipe versus going back and cutting a little bit and going back and cutting a little bit more. So, but he did tell me that if I didn't get a period um, to let him know and call him immediately, that it would feel like I would be getting it, but then it wouldn't come and that would be obviously the symptom of knowing. Um, so... Back to trying to conceive, he said, please, you know, wait at least two weeks, which is perfectly fine because I'm due to get my period, and by the time I'm fertile again, it had it would have been past the two-week mark. So we're going to go ahead and try and conceive um, after that. Um, if you want to know what I'm doing to monitor my ovulation and what kind of OPKs and things like that I'm using to try and conceive, let me know, and I'll make a video. Um, but other than that, um, my... Only instructions were to wait two weeks to try and conceive, to call him if I didn't get a period, and to schedule another pap in six months to make sure that it is indeed normal. Um, for all of you ladies that are going through the similar or same experience, all I want to say is be positive. Don't, and I know it's really difficult because trust me, I was one of those, but try not to psych yourself out and think you're going to die automatically because honestly that's what I did and... Looking back on it, I worried so much for no reason. Um, just try really hard, you know, pray for, you know, great results and just have faith that everything will be okay. Um, if you guys have any questions about any of this, you can comment me or message me and I will be more than happy to answer any questions. But I just really think it's really important to put the phone away, put the computer away, and stop Googling and trying to self-diagnose yourself. I do feel that these kinds of videos from past experiences are helpful because, like me, it does tell you basically what to expect and symptoms after and things of that nature, but don't go on Wikipedia, don't start Googling things because, honestly, there are not that many great fluffy pictures you want to see online. A lot of the images on Google are very graphic and not very pleasant to look at. But just my main thing is to please keep faith and just know that you'll be okay regardless of whatever the situation is. Thank you for watching and don't forget to comment if you have any questions.